booktube this is kelly thank you so much for watching my channel books i'm not reading i am here to do a um, new tag that steve donahue has created it's called the books and life tag and um i just heard it for the first time last night so i just i was just inspired i wanted to i wanted to answer these questions i thought they were really fun uh so i will link uh steve's video down below as well as the prompts. So the first prompt is, on a scale of one to 10, one being a normal person and 10 being the late Harold Bloom. Oh God. How much are books and reading a part of your life? I would probably say I'm somewhere between a six and a seven, just because um, aside from all of you wonderful people and my husband and my occasionally my parents, um, I don't really talk to anyone about books, so I know it's quite sad. Question two, where does your personal library stand right now in relation to the rest of your life? Do you have more books now than you ever have? Fewer? How has your library changed? And I really love this question um, because I think it's so different for so many of us, again, depending on where we are in life. So. Um, I definitely own more books now than ever, ever imagined, uh, too, because I'm married to a book lover, uh, it's someone who takes great, great joy in, uh, buying books, um, and looking at them and hopefully reading them <laughs> at some point. But yeah, um, I mean, I think back to when I graduated from college, I lived in a one bedroom apartment it's like a little ladder uh, a little ladder and like every every shelf was probably this couple couple feet two feet or so across and there's probably four shelves four or five shelves and it was i mean it definitely didn't have it full all the way or anything like that over time <laughs> Uh, eventually I got this white bookcase here for free from somebody at my church, which was great. Um, and so it, it's, that started to, it started to fill up. It replaced the, uh, kind of step ladder, uh, um, bookcase and, uh, put all my books on it. And so I think this white bookcase here was the only bookcase. Let me see if I can just gently move it so you can see see it there. So it was the only bookcase I had for a very long time. And then I married Jason. <laughs> and not only did Jason have a lot of books, um, but we had so many of the same books. We have a lot of books. We have a lot of books. And I have really been focused in the last year and a half on trying, trying to read what we have, you know, because we're so excited when we do a haul, right? Like we're so excited when we buy, when we buy something new and then we put it on a shelf and we don't touch it for, for ages. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I guess that would be, I mean, I, we probably own a little over a thousand books right now. And before, before I did my year of reading, reading one's own project, um, which was 2020. And I swear we decided to do that, um, before COVID, um, Jason and I went through and we counted how many books in our library we had each read. It was almost the exact same number, which was a little creepy, <laughs> but basically we each read about 330 books. I think that that has changed because I did read a lot of books last year and I, I was able to, you know, I finally read them and was able to let them go. So, um, I don't know what the ratio would be now. It might look like I've read fewer books in our personal library, but that's mainly because I've, I've given them away. Okay, question three. Take a mental step back and ask yourself, what is the most likely first bookish impression a newcomer would have in your home? Um, uh, so the one great thing about having this room 
in our house that is a library is that finally there's not like boxes of books in closets. There's not um, stacks of books you know, crammed in different places. Um, I mean, there is still, again, going back to this white bookcase, if you look at all those books on the top, all of these up here, these are things that don't fit on a bookcase. So, I mean, we've pretty much already run out of room. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so there are usually a few, so I'm just gonna adjust this. There are usually a few a couple books like maybe on the coffee table and they're not coffee table books they're what we're what we're reading right now and we just happen to set it down there or maybe on our uh, the bar that wraps around our kitchen uh, so yeah there might be a book or two up there. there are people who come to visit our home and they never come downstairs so they never see the thousand books or so that we that we actually own which is which is interesting um and again you know i don't i don't live in a place that where literacy is um a really strong cultural value i guess <laughs> unfortunately so i think i think people would would know that we were readers if they came to our home um you know, even if they didn't make it down to the library, but once once you've seen the library, then you know we're we're pretty serious about it. <laughs> Question four: How often, if ever, gulp do you clean or reorganize your books? He was talking about like mold and silverfish and stuff, and yeah, we don't have we don't have those kinds of problems here. <laughs> it's too dry. We do occasionally like come down and kind of go through the books. Jason loves like shifting everything around when we have new books and um, that sort of thing. So he takes a lot of pleasure from that. So I leave that up to him. Um, we re recently moved all of our poetry. Our poetry was on the top of one of these really tall bookcases. So I could never get to it. And we re moved the poetry to the little bookcase um, and then took this hideous, well, it's not hideous, but this old, um, I mean, it's very vintage looking, old glass case of my uh, step-grandmother's and moved all the religious books over there. So that freed up, a, I mean, it just made poetry much more accessible to me. So that was the main goal because anytime I wanted a poetry book, I'd have to ask Jason for help. So, but yeah, usually once a year, like, yeah, we go through and, and look at the books. Question five, on average, how many books do you acquire in a given week? <laughs> in a week. So again, like I, I'm still really trying to read what we own, although, you know, once we were fully vaccinated and could go out a little tiny bit more, I did buy um, some books and that was great fun. And so, but I mean, honestly, in a, in a week, I would say, you know, on average, it's, it's less than one book. If you, if you averaged it out over the course of a whole year, you know, it's, it's gonna be, it's not even gonna be 0.5, it's gonna be like 0 0.2, 0 0.3. I mean, and again, we own a thousand books. Do we really, do we need to buy more? Like, let's read what we own and then either either be excited and love it and tell everyone on booktube how much, how great it was or whatever, um, or like let it go, you know, but. Anyway, this is one of the things about being married that's really challenging is that, you know, you have to merge your music collection, you have to merge your book collection, you merge your movie collection together. And sometimes there are things that the other person that you love dearly wants to hold on to and you don't give two hoots about it, but you can't, you can't get rid of it. So, yes. All right, uh, let's see, question six. Um, what song is your current earworm? 
This is so random, Steve. This is so random. So actually, um, I on Friday night, we did watch the Jane Austen Book Club. And there's a few songs uh, in that um, in that film that I just keep, at the moment, I keep hearing, hearing them. I think one of them is, one of them might be an Amy Mann song. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who they're by or anything like that. But if you watch that movie, the opening songs and then the songs toward the end, like, yeah, they're just, they're just trapped, trapped in there. I think there's three of them. Um, let's see. Question seven, what percentage of your self-control do you retain in a well-stocked bookshop? Oh, Steve, I'm, I have so much self-control when it comes to books because I know there isn't any room. <laughs> there is no more room for more books. So I have quite a bit, quite a bit of self-control. I would say I can be a good 98 <laughs> 99% self-control. I take tremendous pleasure in going to bookstores and browsing. I really, really love that. Let's see, question eight. Do you ever feel the need to take a break from books? If so, what form does it take? At the moment, our summer reading challenge at the library, at the public library, is to read 20 minutes a day. And it's actually quite helpful to know that you've at least read for 20 minutes, but I'm reading Mansfield Park by Jane Austen for Jane Austen July. And yeah, I, uh, I don't know, like, I wish I could read it faster. I have found myself going back and reading paragraphs over and over and over again. So it's really um, been a little bit slower than I expected, but um, as far as like absolute slumps where I'm not reading anything, I mean, I've had stretches in my life where I just looked at books without any, um, connection, any affection, uh, <laughs> not, I, as Steve in his video does a great job of talking about his special book room and how like somebody had told him that like those books like radiate love and, um, I've gone through, through stretches where no book radiated any love uh, to me. So um, it's usually when something major is going on in my life. Question nine, when you meet a new person, how long does it take take you to bring up books? And I don't ever do that. I don't ever bring up books. Uh, the only time, and this was a Jason suggestion actually, the only time that I did bring it up was actually a job interview and they had sent me some questions they wanted me to answer in advance. And one was just like, tell us a little bit about like, like your life or, or tell us a little bit about yourself or whatever. And Jason said, you should tell them about the Pulitzer project. And I was like, they don't want to hear about the Pulitzer project. This book and this job has absolutely nothing to do with books whatsoever. Um, and finally I just, I was like, oh, well, what the heck? Like, okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll include that in there. And they loved it. Um, <laughs> of course the people who interviewed me don't work there anymore. <laughs> so no, I, I mean, I don't talk to people about books. People don't bring up books. That is not like the kind of water cooler talk in the world that I live in. Oh, what, is, what, are, what are you reading right now? That sort of thing. That's partly why I'm here, you guys. So I can talk to all of you about what I've been reading, you know, that sort of thing. Question 10, have you given any thought to made any provisions for your personal library after you croak? So in my will, I, I do have a will and uh, I have listed certain people who are very important friends to me and um, or, uh, you know, younger relatives, um, that if there is something of mine that they would like to have, they're welcome to it. Um, I have tried to leave the things that are important to my family to relatives, but you know, I mean, I, you guys, I used to work at hospice, so, uh, it's not an unfamiliar topic to me. And the truth is like, yeah, you just don't get to take it with you, you know? So enjoy, enjoy 
the books you have while you have them and when you're gone yeah like I'm I have no doubt that a tremendous amount of the things that I own will end up at Salvation Army or Goodwill or some other kind of thrift store uh yeah charity shop um it's it's all yeah auction it off whatever and I'm not that I'm not that concerned about it so uh, question 11, are you known among your friends and loved ones for your weird and probably unhealthy relationship with books? Um, and again, like not really, this is why I'm here. <laughs> like if I had a bunch of people in my life that I was talking to about books, I would have missed out on getting to know all of you, which, um, so, you know, you can, the cup can be half empty or half full, but, um, I do feel like I have relationships with people that are, are based about based on books, but they're all people on booktube. I do want to tag some people. Steve just tagged the world, but I'm gonna actually tag some people. So um I want to tag Kosh from Cruel Reader's Thesis, MH Books, Miss Reads a Lot, um, and Larry has opinions. Let's see if he has opinions about this. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will talk to you soon. Bye, booktube.